Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenAL 3D audio tutorial and this week we're going to be loading up and playing a sound effect. So let's get straight into it and the first thing that we're going to do is to create a new package called audio for all of our audio code. Before we go any further we're going to need a sound effect that we can play using the OpenAL code and for this tutorial the sound needs to be in a .wav format. So find yourself a sound effect or if you want you can download the one that I'm going to be using from the description of this video and then put that sound effect into your audio folder which is in your project's source folder. In Eclipse you can then refresh your project and you should now be able to see the sound file. So let's get started with the coding and we're going to start off by creating a new class in the audio package called audio master and this class is going to be in charge of all of the audio stuff. So before we can use any of the OpenAL methods, we need to initialize OpenAL and we can do this by calling al.create and this basically just sets up all of the OpenAL sound stuff that we're going to be using and we're going to need to surround that in a try catch. Likewise, when we close the game, when we're finished with OpenAL, we need to call al.destroy and I'm going to put that into a cleanup method. So we're going to call this when we close the game. Next up we're going to create a method which can load up a sound file into a buffer and if you remember from last week a buffer is one of those three objects that we were talking about and the buffer is just the audio data. So we're going to load up a file which I've represented as a string here and we're going to store it into a buffer and first off we need to create an empty buffer and we can do that by calling algenBuffers which returns the ID of the buffer. And we're actually going to want to keep track of all of the buffers that have been created so that we can delete them all when the game closes. So up here I've created a static list of integers and this list is just going to hold the ID of all of the buffers that have been created. So now whenever we create a buffer we need to add it to that list so that, can, so that it can be deleted when the game closes. So we now need to load up this file and we're going to use a class provided by Lightweight Java Game Library called the wave data class and to load up our sound file we can call wave data dot create this takes in the string and you'll probably have two uh, create methods here one from lightweight java game library and one from slick utils so just use the lightweight java game library one and that will load up our sound file and we can then store the sound data into the buffer by calling al buffer data this takes in the buffer that we want to store the data in, it takes in the format of the data which we can get from the WAV file, WAV file .format. It takes in the audio data itself which again is in the WAV file and it takes in the sampling rate which again we can get from that WAV file class. And now that we've stored the data from the WAV file into the buffer we can dispose of the WAV file. And finally we just need to return the buffers ID from this method. In the cleanup method now we're going to want to delete all of the buffers in that list so when the game closes all of the buffers that have been created will get deleted. So we're going to loop through that list and for each buffer we're just going to delete it and to delete a buffer you have to call al delete buffers and that takes in the id of the buffer that you want to delete. We're also going to add one more method into this class and this method is going to set some of the properties of the listener and if you remember from last week the listener basically represents you, represents where in the scene you should be hearing the sound from. So to set a property of the listener we have to call an al listener method and I'm going to set the position first so that's going to be a 3f. So the first parameter is the name of the property that you want to set and then you put in the value of the property so I'm just going to set the position to 0, 0, 0 and I'm also going to do the same for the velocity um, but we'll be changing these next week when we deal with 3D sound effects. Let's now create a new class for the one object type that we haven't talked about yet which is the sources and if you remember from last week the sound sources are the objects that can actually play sound effects so these are like the CD players if the buffers are like the CDs. So each source has a source ID and the first thing we need to do is to create a source and we can do that by calling algensources which will create a new source and it will return the ID of that source. And we're then going to set some of the properties of that source. So I talked a bit about this last week so to set a property of the source we have to call an alsource method and this is alsourcef because I'm going to be setting the volume or the gain of the, of the source and the gain is going to be a float. 
and here you can see I've set the gain to 1 and here I'm going to set the pitch to 1 which again is just one float so AL source F again. Now I'm going to set the position of the source and the position is of course three floats so I'm going to call AL source 3F. This takes in like the other methods the ID of the source first then it takes in the name of the property that needs to be changed and it then takes in the new value of the property. So again I'm just going to be setting the position to 000, 000 for this week but next week when we work with 3D sounds we'll be changing the position so that we can play the sound effect from different places in the 3D world. We're now just going to create a method to delete the source once we're finished with it and we can do that by calling al delete sources and finally we need a method that can play a sound effect so this is going to take in the sound effect that we want to play and of course the sound effect is going to be a buffer and before we can play the sound effect we need to associate the buffer with the source uh, so basically like putting the CD into the CD player before we can play it and again this is just a property of the source so the property we want to change is the buffer and the value of the property is the buffer's ID and once the buffer has been associated with the source we can play the source uh, by calling AL source play and putting in the ID of the source and that will play the sound effect which is contained in that buffer. So let's now test out what we've done so far so I'm going to create a test class with a main method and I'm going to be using this to test out the audio code this week instead of the actual game. So the first thing we need to do is to initialize OpenAL and we can do that by calling audiomaster.init and we're then going to uh, set the properties of the listener by calling audiomaster.setListenerData and we're then going to load up our sound effect into a buffer and we can do that by calling audiomaster.loadSound and this takes in the file that you want to load up so mine was in the audio folder and it was called bounce.wav so that loads up the sound effect into a buffer and of course we need a source to be able to play that buffer so you need to create yourself a new source. I'm now just going to set up a little bit of code to allow for some user input here so that the user can decide when the sound effect should be played and the user is going to be inputting a character to indicate what should happen so I'm just going to loop around until the user inputs the character Q so when the user types in Q it will quit the program and each loop we need to get the input from the user by calling system.in.read and uh, we can just throw this error for now because it's just some test code and if the user inputs the character P um, and make sure to use single quotation marks for these characters here so if the user inputs P then we're going to play the source using the buffer but if the user inputs a Q it's going to quit the while loop and we then want to tidy everything up so we're going to delete the source and we're also going to clean up all the buffers and the OpenAL stuff by calling audiomaster.cleanup. So again all that's happening here is we're loading up a sound effect into a buffer, we're creating a source to play that buffer and then we're getting the input from the user and if the user types in P it's going to play the sound effect and if the user types in Q it will quit the program. So let's go ahead and run that and if I type in P and then press enter you can hear that it plays the sound effect and uh, if I type in Q and press enter it should quit the program. And of course if you want you can go into the source class and change some of the properties of the source. So I'm going to try setting the pitch to 2 here and if I go ahead and run that you can hear that the sound effect plays at a higher pitch. So that is it for this week. Next time we're going to be working on playing 3D sound effects where the position and velocity of the source will make a difference and that video will of course be out in two weeks time. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.